you know, Steph, instead of, uh, instead of giving your little villagers a, uh, your neighbors their presents, you should give them something else. You should give them something to think about. You should, uh, you should give them, you should give them five good reasons to quit giving you attitude. One, two, three, four, five. She caught a big ass fish. Big tuna. It's big tuna. Shout out to the office. Hello, folks. How are you doing? Welcome back to Heine House Gaming and Tech Podcast. So good to see you. Thanks for being here. I'm your good friend, Jason, hanging out with you. We're going to be talking about games, tech, fun stuff, news that's been happening this week in the gaming and tech world. We're going to be talking about maybe some stories. We're going to take some voicemails at the end of the show. I've got a lot of great stuff to talk about. It's going to be a lot of fun. It is... Um, what is it? April 12th, 2020 it is almost six o'clock PM and we are recording this live. Let's talk about Patreon. This show is completely funded and supported by your support and all of the lovely people you see on your screen. Thank you everyone. A round of applause. <laughs> the lovely people here, patreon.com slash Jason Heine. That's where you take part. Hey, you know what? We're all in lockdown here. We're indoors. We're doing our thing. I'm going to continue on and create content. Um, for everyone. And you guys have written in and said lots of great positive things like, hey, you know, just listen to a bunch of the episodes. They were great. Thank you. We appreciate you. You know, like that means a lot to me. It really does. And I, I appreciate you all. So thank you. And thanks to all the patrons that you see right here. Amazing stuff. Um, Heinehouse.com is the website, of course, and everywhere else, social media, same place. You guessed it. Heinehouse, you know. Um, we got some random news to talk about before we jump into some other stuff. Oh, I have a top 10 list, which is great coming up. Actually, it's coming up very soon. It's more like a top 35, <laughs> more like a top 35 list. Um, it's the top takeout orders that are happening right now, according to Uber Eats, um, out of 35 states, uh, Uber Eats pulled 35 states and these are the top, top takeout, uh, menu items according to the state. So if I have your state on here, if you're in the U.S., LOL for us all. But to start off with random news, ladies and gentlemen, round of applause. The Miss Stephanie has launched her very own YouTube channel. Yes, it's real. It's awesome. She's shaking her head. Come on, it's awesome. It's fun. She, she's like, don't get excited. I think it's great. It's something that we've been talking about a long time. And she loves gaming. She loves ASMR type stuff. And she's like, oh, I don't really, you know, she was like, I don't know if I want to talk about it. Yes, talk about it. Bring it out. Let's talk about it. It's great. You should be proud of what you've done. It's great stuff. So she created an, an ASMR gaming YouTube channel. It's called ASMR Gaming Bliss. All one word. ASMR Gaming Bliss. Go check it out. Go type it in YouTube. Give her a sub. I think it's great. So she is, she's, she started out with some animal dropping stuff. She recorded Gameplay footage an hour long, different times at night when it's windy. She's still recording footage. I think she's got about five or six videos that are done. She's working on them. But uh, it's just like ASMR gaming related to where like the sounds of the game, the way she sat by the beach on one of these videos where you can hear the waves and the music playing and she's picking out different times. Now, this is just specific to Animal Crossing, but there's other games in there too. Uh, like I recorded a Crew 2 video a long time ago where I was in the boat just like coasting, floating down the water. You can hear the water and the birds. And so I gave that to her. She's going to put that on the channel. Real cool stuff. Anyway, it's fantastic. It's great. So ASMR Gaming Bliss, go check her out and give her a sub. And she's she's just excited. It's the coolest thing, man. It's so cool to see. Like like the other day, like she uploaded the video. And then the next day she's like, yeah, I got my first comment. Like, dude, I I know what this. I go, you know how long it took for me to get my first comment on a video? It took me weeks. Like it took weeks. And I remember, I remember the first person. Candy Red Spider-Man was the guy's name. <laughs> <laughs> that was his name on YouTube. And, and you know, it's, and I, I've said this story a couple of times. Candy Red Spider-Man was the dude's name. I wonder where he is. Much love to him. I have no idea. But the first comment I got was on my RC program video. That was the very first video I uploaded. And you know what the comment said? Good job. She, she guessed good job. No, it wasn't good job. I wish I could hear all your guesses right now. I know some of you are saying, you fucking idiot. <laughs> you suck at making videos. I had some people say I'm not a real gamer today. 
uh, on my top 20 uh, NES video that's 10 years old. <laughs> Someone goes, you're not a real gamer. Like, you're one to judge me. Like, what the fuck is your problem? Anyway, so get used to that. That might happen. Actually, not for you because you're just ASMR. So no one will talk shit about that. But the comment was dope. <laughs> that's it. And I'm like, thank you. Oh, thank you. I'm so happy. Thanks for being here. I was like, I love you. Thank you. And then from that that moment on, like every video, probably for like the next, I would say almost a year, to be honest. It was a long time. It wasn't like the first comments that would come through, but he would come through on my uploads and eventually just write dope on like every video. Yeah. And it became kind of like an inside joke between him and I. It was really, really cool. And he's vanished. I don't know where he is. I don't even know if his account's still there, but much love to him. Much love to him. Candy Red Spider Man. It's so funny. Spider Man, Spider Man. It's so. <laughs> he's dressed up in like. I feel like he's dressed up as like a, a Ludens, like red, just like red outfit and like Spider Man. I'm Spider Man. So funny. Anyway, good shit. Good shit. Um, so yeah, ASMR Gaming Bliss. Uh, tell, her, tell her that. Uh, tell her that you love her. Her ASMR videos. No, they're they're really. She wanted to do this for her to like listen at night. Like this was something that she just wanted to make videos and like put them private and listen to them. And then like, then we talked about it. We're like, no, let's just do a channel, do a whole channel. Fuck it, put them up there. Other people will like it too. Like we listen to Animal Crossing music. We listen to other ASMR stuff. Like just do it. Put put them up there. If other people like them, great. So check them out. Good stuff. Round of applause to Steph. Give it up. Man, it's tough. It's tough to launch YouTube in this climate today. You know, it's it's so saturated of stuff. And so you just do it for fun. Do it because you love it. And that's really, um, that's really where you'll get the most enjoyment out of your stuff. Just do it for fun. Um, fuck it. Let's go right into it. I've got the top 30, top 35 list. I'm going to blaze through these. So Uber Eats did a poll in 35 states. And this, this list is broke down. Man, this had to have been a lot of research, to be honest. But this list shows the number one ordered, oops, takeout item. That is, uh, you've got mail. You've got voicemail uh, in these states. All right. So we're going to blaze through them. So according to Uber Eats, here we go. It's in, uh, actually, it's in alphabetical order. Now, it's not every state, just 35. Here we go. In Arizona, French fries. We we probably, I think, maybe. Yeah, it's all me. Yeah, I, I may have ordered a few. <laughs> I actually have them, but I really want fries now. Um, California. Uh, it's a chicken mashalala. Marcella? Marshalala. la um, I love Indian food, mind you. And uh, I, I do love that. It's pretty good. Love that curry chicken. Uh, in Colorado, carne asada fries. It's also fries. Carne asada fries, though. Colorado. Connecticut, a burrito bowl. Florida. French fries. Actually, you know what? Every time there's a French fries, we're going to give a ding woo. Every time there's French fries, there's a ding woo. Because, uh, not going to lie, I see it a lot on this menu. All right, so where were we? Uh, Florida. Wait, why is Florida up there? Okay, it's not in alphabetical order. Never mind. French fries for Florida. <laughs> Georgia. Pad Thai. Hawaii. Barbecue mixed plate. Mm, I do love a barbecue mixed plate. Illinois. French fries. <laughs> Indiana, waffle fries. I'll oh, give it. Fuck it. <laughs> Iowa, the large poke bowl. Pokey bowl. It's a pokey bowl. Is it pocky? I think it's pocky. P O K E. I think it's pocky. Poke. <laughs> it's, it's not French. Um, Kentucky, pad thai. Louisiana, chips and queso. Mmm. Fuck yeah. Oh, we'll give them a dingo just for that. Smart. Smart. Uh, in Maine, cheese bread. Mm, love cheese bread. Uh, Maryland, egg, bacon, and cheese. It also says egg, bacon, and cheese. I guess like a breakfast or breakfast burrito. It li literally says egg, comma, bacon, and cheese. Just what, separately? That's weird. Might be. Yeah, probably a sandwich. It's like <laughs> egg, bacon, and cheese, a McMuffin. <laughs> no. Uh, Massachusetts, burrito. Burritos. Michigan, pad thai. Minnesota, garlic naan bread. Oh, it's very good. Minnesota, garlic naan. Yeah, interesting. Very cool. Uh, Missouri, crab ragoon. Montana, enchiladas. Yes, bring it on. Nevada, chicken teriyaki bowl. New Jersey, 
Good old fashioned OG chicken sandwich. Uh, New York. Attitudes. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it says that's not on there. Steph, why, why does it say that? I'm just kidding. New York jerk chicken. Yeah, yeah, fucking jerk. The fuck's wrong with you, you jerk? You jerk chicken. Quit jerking my chicken. Oh, that sounds weird. Oh, okay. Moving on. North Carolina. Nachos. You fucking jerk. <laughs> Ohio. Not so fries. I think nacho fries, unless it's a typo, but is there really such a thing as n it's N O T S O, not so fries? Can we look that up? Yeah, pull out your phone. Can we look that up? That's interesting. Not so fries. Like, like this is not, not yo chicken. Yeah, fucking jerk. <laughs> I do. I need to sample that. I need to put that in my fucking sound, soundboard. Yeah, jerk. <laughs> uh, where were we? North Carolina. Oh, wait, where did that? Uh, Ohio. There we are. Ohio's not so fries. Where's my fucking ding woo here? Okay. Um, where do we leave off? Oklahoma. Spicy tuna roll. Oh, she's got it. Can I borrow your phone for a quick mo? Not so fries. It looks like, oh, they're, they're uh, uh, tato skins with cheese and looks like bacon. Yeah, that's exactly what this is. Let me show the camera. You probably can't see it, but it's not in focus. Boom, there it is. Mm. So it's it's tater skins with cheese and bacon and a dollop of sour cream if you're fancy like that. All right? That's how you eat them, too. <laughs> just like that. Just put it at the end of the table and just ram it in. Yeah, fucking jerk. <laughs> Quit jerking my... Okay. Um, where were we? Oklahoma spicy tuna roll. We already did that. Oklahoma. Yeah. Okay. Oregon fried chicken for our Oregonians. Let's see what else here. Pennsylvania cheesesteak. I love cheesesteak. It's a good sandwich. Rhode Island. Yeah. Fucking jerk. Hot dogs. <laughs> yeah. They, they get down with that. Right. I mean, who wants a who wants a, a classic New York dog? I do. I do. Raise of hands. South Carolina. South Carolina French fries. <laughs> Take your shirt off. Spin like a helicopter. <laughs> French fries. Uh, Tennessee. Pad, pad Thai. <laughs> oh, Pad Thai. Love good Pad Thai. Oh, wow. Tennessee, Pad Thai. Texas, Pad Thai. Boom, 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 boom. Utah, carne asada, french fries. Uh, Utah, wait, where did you do that? Virginia, french fries. Yeah, they're all over the place. Okay, Washington, for our Washingtonians, what do we got? French fries. Uh. I don't know. I mean, let's call Uber Eats and get them on the horn. I don't know how they do this, but. And finally, Wisconsin, the final, the final one here. Wisconsin, Crab Ragoon. Yeah, fucking jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, Susan. Where are the fries? Fuck. <laughs> Susan, we've got Crab Ragoon. Fuck. <laughs> Where am I not so fries? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's getting it. Oh my goodness. Good stuff. Um, notice, actually, this is interesting. Notice pizza isn't on here at all. Yeah. Is that weird? That's is it, weird. Is it because most pizza places have their own delivery thing? Oh, yeah, duh. <laughs> <laughs> no shit, Sherlock. Get deeper, Watson. <laughs> Fuck. Susan, where's the pizza? It's coming from Domino's. <laughs> Fuck. They have their own delivery. God, I'm an idiot. You fucking jerk. <laughs> Maybe it's, she's over there so innocent, like, I gotta actually break him some fucking knowledge. I gotta actually say this to him live on fucking air. Wow. Okay, here we go. Uh, it's, do you think it's because they have their own delivery? Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. 
Zeus in. Fuck. <laughs> the water. <laughs> it's overflowing. The toilet. Fuck. Uh, yeah, this is Mr. Hine uh, in room 206. Uh, our toilet's overflowing. Uh, we've got a real serious problem here, folks. Uh, good shit. <clears throat> good shit. Man, cheers to that. Hey, can someone order us some fucking french fries? Let's bring it in. All right. Uh, last bit on... Uh, I don't know why I put this in random news. It should be in gaming news. Whatever. Terraria adds Bluetooth controller support. <laughs> Seven years later on their game. So, hey, remember uh, Terraria? Huge game, very popular. Uh, but, hey, if you want to play it with a Bluetooth controller, they now support it in the game. Who knew? Pretty cool. Pretty cool. <clears throat> oh, my gosh. I'm dying. That's so funny. Let's continue on to this week in gaming history, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> I know. I'm already feeling it. I'm going to lose it. <clears throat> By the end of the show, I won't have a voice. That's cool. It's cool, because fucking A, Susan! Where are my fries? <laughs> wow, pizza's not on here. That's really weird. I don't know why pizza's not on there. <laughs> Steph's over like, Jesus. Probably because they have a fucking their own delivery. I gotta actually tell him that. <laughs> Maybe because they've got their own to fuck! Yeah, jerk! <laughs> you jerk! <laughs> I just wanted a fucking New York dog. That's all I wanted was a New York dog. They sent me, they sent me fries. They sent me chicken mashalala. All right, April 12th through April 18th. The this is the section we talk about games that came out during the week this podcast airs in the past. That makes sense. I try to <laughs> try to it it's going. Does this make sense at all to you? Um <clears throat> April 12th. <laughs> I want to be a dentist. Oh, no. Who was the, it was the elephant that had the, the squeaky voice. The, the elephant did? The elephant toy. Oh, yeah. Um, we're all misfit toys. Yeah. yeah. That's what he sounded like. Yeah. We're just misfit toys. I want to be a dentist. Sorry, I don't have that kind of voice. No, just, you know what? I'm going to get you a mic. You know, we've talked about this, but I need another preamp for you. Does that make sense? Okay, we're getting geeky. Okay, April 12th, in 2007, Mortal Kombat 2 on PS3 was released. And I wrote here, that must be on the PSN store, right? It must have been on the store. Because, um, yeah. I mean, MK2 has been out since, what, 93, right? Uh, in 2010, Grand Theft Auto Episodes of Liberty City on PC was released this week. Very cool. Actually, that's today. This is the day. Today. Uh, in 2016, today, Dark Souls 3 on PS4 and Xbox One was released. How about it? How about it, Susan? Praise the sun, Susan. <laughs> Jesus, Susan. <laughs> These fries, they're wrong. Fuck. <laughs> the toilet overflowing. Fuck. April 12th, 1990, Batman the video game on Game Boy was released. In 1992, Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Moth Past. What a great game. Oh, Steph, do you have... I'm sorry, I know you're leaving. Do you happen to have a Wii uh, condom anywhere? If, if, not, if it's not readily available, I'll go dig one out. But Because I have a joke that I want to do later with it. <clears throat> um, okay. I know we don't, I know we don't use them. Ho! Giggity! <clears throat> I was just curious if there was one over there. Uh, 2010, Splinter Cell Conviction on 360. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. She brought a floppy one in. Okay, great. Thank you. I'm going to pause the, uh, I actually need a Joy-Con. <laughs> just one, please. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. Fuck. She's like, you didn't say that when I was in there already digging through the... I forgot. Thanks, Susan. Fuck. Beautiful. Mm. Okay, thanks. That'll be for a joke later. Okay. Um, 2012, Fez on 360. And in 2015, Mortal Kombat X on PC was released. Moving on to the next day, April 14th in 1999, Pokemon's Pinball on Game Boy Color. I put this on here because I had no idea that this game existed. 
Has anyone played it? Pokemon Pinball. I think it needs to be brought up. Who's played it? Another pinball game that you would not think is good and you probably have no idea exists is House of the Dead Pinball. And also Sonic Spinball, but everyone knows about Sonic Spinball. There was a House of the Dead Pinball game for Game Boy Advance. I own it and I love it. It's fantastic. You should absolutely play it if you can find it. Get your hands on it. I picked it up in, at Portland Retro Gaming Expo in like 20... Shit, this has probably been 2011, 2012. And it was like in a bin. I was over there with Video Game Wizards. They had a huge bin full of just um, Game Boy Advance games, like just loose games and a huge fucking bin. I was digging. There's pictures. I have pictures. Steph took some pictures of me just digging. And I found it in there too for like a few bucks. Very, very cool game though. You really should play it. Um, anyway, 2001 Metal Slug X on <clears throat> PS1. My voice, I'm fucking up. Let me do a little, let me do a little drinky poo there, Rand. I'm fucking up my voice. It's fun though. It's so fun. Um, 2003. Uh, X2 Wolverine's Revenge on PS2 was released. Those are, some of those are hit and miss, but they're pretty good games. Moving on to the next day, April 15th in 2002, Gauntlet Dark Legacy on Xbox, the original OG Xbox. Great game. Great four player. Um, was also released on GameCube and um, PS2. 2004, Kirby in the Amazing Mirror in Japan on Game Boy Advance. What is this? Well, it's in Japan exclusively, so I, I obviously don't know about it. But what is that game? Alice, are you listening? What 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 is that game? Do you have it? You probably have it. 2008, Gran Turismo 5 Prologue on PS3. And in 2008, same day, same year, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Vegas 2. One of my favorite Tom Clancy games. Other than uh, the original Athena Sword and all that. Released on PC. Moving on to the next day. <clears throat> April 16th in 2001, Ill Bleed on Dreamcast. 2001, same day, same year. Resident Evil 3 Nemesis on PC. 2002, Breath of Fire 2 for Game Boy Advance. 2013's Injustice, God Among Us. Remember that? Huge game. PS3 and 360. 2014, Trials Fusion on Xbox One. And in 2019, World War Z on PC, Xbox One, and PS4. I put this one on here. So remember, folks, we're actually going... I remember reporting about this day or this week last year. And it's funny because we start to have an overlap and everything that came out this day last year wouldn't have been on the list then, right? Because it just came out like this day. So now we're reporting on it a year later. Does that make sense? So it's pretty cool. So we're going to have some 2019s in there, which is cool throughout um, gaming history. It's really cool. Uh, which I put this in here, World War, World War Z, because it became free last week. Um, where was that on Epic store? I think it was on Epic store. You could uh, go download that for free. So check that out. <clears throat> April 17th, 1987 Riger on NES in Japan. 2007's Tokyo extreme racer drift Two on PS2. That gets Andy triggered. Life loves that game. 2012, the house of the dead, the house of the dead. Reload, reload, reload. It's uh, House of the Dead 4 on PS3. 2012, The Witcher 2, Assassins of Kings on 360. 2019, here we are, three games that came out last year on this day. Cuphead on Switch. 2019, Katana Zero on Switch. A game that we, gosh, it's been a year. We still haven't picked it up. That game looks awesome. Meant to pick it up, never did. We'll get around to it, we promise. And finally... A year ago on April 17th, Granny Simulator. Wait, what? On PC? Granny Simulator? Not going to lie. When I was compiling this list, folks, I saw this Granny Simulator game. I went directly to Steam. I looked it up. I saw it was $5, and I fucking bought it. Are you serious? <laughs> I'm not serious. I bought it. I am not messing around. I want to play. I'm going to stream Granny Simulator. And I have no idea what I'm getting into with this, but it looks hilarious. It has all positive reviews. People are LOLing. They're laughing. They think it's hilarious. Yeah, Grandpa. I'll have to, yeah, I have to do it in uh, Grandpappy's voice. Grandpappy. Yeah. Grandpappy. We'll have to do it. Hilarious. Okay, next day, final day here in gaming history, folks. April 18th, 1986, Dig Dug 2 on NES. 1994's Super Metroid. <laughs> 
on the Super Nintendo, of course. 2002 Capcom vs. SNK Pro in Japan on PS1. 2011's Portal 2 on PC. And finally, on April 18th in 2017, Full Throttle Remastered on PS4. Ladies and gentlemen, that was this week in gaming history. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Uh, moving right along here to gaming news. Final Fantasy VII Remake is taking over the internet. I think everyone is playing it. Everyone's enjoying it. And uh, we had some people roll through my stream last night who are like, Thank you, Jay. I just wanted to roll through and just say, like, you're like the only one that's not playing it. So I'm trying. Some people are trying to not see it because they want to see it on their own. So that just shows that there's a ton of people playing it. It was a huge game. Um, and from what I understand and from what I've learned um, when talking about this with uh, fellow gamers alike is that a lot of people really like 7 and 11. Um no resemblance to the convenience store, of course. But Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy XI are kind of the two that really stand out with people um, for many, many reasons. And um, I think that's great. So to get a remake, I think it's huge. And it's definitely on... If you go, go log into... Go log into the internet. It's everywhere. So a lot of people are playing that. Uh, really cool stuff right there. Just wanted to make mention of it. As if you already don't know, but you know... Uh, big news here. This is probably the biggest news that broke of the week is that Sony, they just randomly revealed it, just dropped it like no big deal, but they just randomly earlier in this week showed off and revealed their brand new controller for the PlayStation 5, folks. It's called the DualSense. I put some bullet points here to talk a little bit about it. Again, this is kind of old news by this point. A, a week's worth here. It's you know a few days. It, it passed around a lot. This is a very, very big news. Everyone's heard about it. But if you haven't, I have some pictures I'll show off here in a minute. Haptic feedback in the triggers, which is cool. That's something that Xbox has had. I'm just saying. But anyway, haptic feedback, all right, in the triggers. Very cool. I am throwing a little shade. I mean, you know what? You got to understand, though. I don't know. Sometimes these companies are a little bit behind each other, and sometimes they're a little ahead of each other. So they flip-flop, all right? So... I'm going to give Microsoft a little credit for kind of being innovative earlier with that as far as their controller. Now, let's just say, let's just go on. Look, I, I'm not talking shit at all. Believe me, I'm not. The thing is, is that Sony has kept their controller layout since the beginning of time, really. It's changed a little bit, but it has mostly stayed the same. Um, why? Because it works. It's tried, it's true, it's tested, it's, it's what people are familiar with. It makes sense. Microsoft, on the other hand, has kind of made some alterations and done some changes and things like that, and they've innovated, and you got to give them credit for that. I also give Sony credit, but also there's some technology bits that can be put into a controller. I think they could have done haptic uh, earlier on. I think PS4 could have had haptic. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with it. They should have done that from the beginning. It it does feel nice, and playing games where that takes advantage of, like racing games or fighting games, you can feel like the impact or the road or whatever. It's very, very nice. I do like it on the Xbox One controller. Um, so here are some other things. Um, they changed the angle of the hand triggers a little bit in order to make the controller feel smaller in your hands than it actually is. This is a big departure for Sony. This is big news. Sony has now slightly, if they say ever so slightly, changed the look, the feel, and really the design a bit of the PlayStation controller. This is really the first time in Sony's history. So, hey, this is big news. Very big news. Um, it does still have a rechargeable battery inside. Uh, the share button has become the create button. More details on that later, they uh, announced. It has a built, here's a big one. It has a built-in mic array, which allows for quick and convenient game setups and lobbies for quick chat, voice chat conversation. They do say on there, if you want to play for an extended period of time, you'll want a headset. Yes. No shit. This, I think this is cool to have a microphone built into the controller. However, it's going to be a very low quality microphone. It's not going to sound for shit. And unless you're probably like right up next to it, I mean, you're going to be picking up. I mean, it's just what we want, right? Just what we want. We want, we want to hear your fucking sausage fingers sliding over the controller on that microphone. That's not okay. She's ASMR and over. She's like, I kind of like that. <laughs> but if you're trying a game, that's not what you're trying to hear. 
So you're going to hear, yeah, you fuck, I'm a fuck your mom, you noob. You're going to hear that all day long. And then you're going to hear sausage fingers and then Doritos is going to be all in there and you're going to have to <laughs> blow it out and try to, you know, it's okay. You know, flavor savers for later. But yeah, so I think that's a cool feature. However, they've already stated like, this is not the, this, not the preferred communications device. Use a headset. And for the love of God, please use a headset. Uh, because, yeah, because the TVs, man, TV sound, you're going to have it up loud. You're going to be talking. You're going to have friends over. It's going to be like, oh, boy. We have some, uh, later on in the segment, I have some stuff to talk about with chat and Discord and things like that. And uh, it's going to tie in, actually kind of tie into this a little bit. Um, okay, they changed the color scheme. It's now a uh, black and white two-tone look. They moved the LED color bar that used to be in the back of the controller or top, I guess, depending on how you hold it. Uh, it's now on the sides and underneath of the touchpad. And um, I have some pictures I would like to show of it. I think everyone... Oh, shit. I'm going to have to turn this on. Hold on. There it is right there. See? And I think... I honestly think it looks really nice. I think it looks sexy. I mean, you say what you want about a white controller where your hands are... It's going to get dirty. You're going to notice it. It just means that, you know, the controllers that you have now that are black, you can't tell how... <laughs> completely nasty and dirty they are. But, uh, I mean, th think about your Wii remote. I mean, you had a Wii remote. How dirty did that get? Probably be equal, you know? But, uh, yeah, no, I think it looks good. I think it looks good. It looks comfy. And uh, we'll see how it goes. I think that's the mic array right here, dead center. You can see that there? You can see in the bottom, there's the little jack in the bottom for your headset. Very nice. Yeah, I think it looks good. We'll see. Um, I only have one thing I want to say about this. And this is something I've been wanting them to do, oh, I don't know, from the beginning of the PlayStation controllers. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me get my voice ready to yell this. <clears throat> Sony, if you can hear me, fix your fucking triggers. There we go. I got that off my chest. I feel much better now. I feel good. Their triggers are their weakest link. All right. The, the L2 and R2 triggers, the analog triggers that go in, Oh, why are they so bad? Why are you, why are they so bad? Like you almost make them, but then you don't play with your controllers. And that's not true because you do. Then why are they so bad? Your fingers always slip off. And I'm talking about people who play any game that requires you to hold down a trigger and keep it there like a throttle break. Yeah, I'm talking about racing games. For shooters and stuff, it's just a click, 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 clickety clack. It's fine. But if you hold it down, for a long period of time, your finger starts to slide off the bottom. And then seriously, and I mean, let's just say maybe you're a sweaty gamer. All right. Maybe you got sweaty palms. All right. Maybe your hands get a little sweaty, a little greasy. Maybe you had a few, few too many slices of pizza. You didn't wash your hands, which is a bad rule. You should always wash your hands after you eat pizza. But maybe you didn't and it comes a little greasy and your finger slides off. I don't want this to, I don't want this to become like this argument where I'm like, well, <laughs> The Xbox controller is superior because that's what it sounds like. No, what I want this to be is that your controllers need to be, your triggers need to be fixed. Microsoft has done this from the beginning of time. Their original Xbox, their fat Duke controller had wonderful triggers. It was, it was like curved and concaved. And when you held it down, it fit in your finger and it went down and it, it was totally perfect. It didn't go the angle at which it's completely depressed is like straight. It's not at an angle where it's underneath the controller. Go grab your PS3 and PS4 controller, pull the trigger all the way in, and see where your finger sits. It's almost flat. The PS3 actually is almost underneath the controller. It goes like down. It's enough to go down, and it's so flat that it's actually rounded. The PS3 one is kind of rounded, and it's just, it's not a, it's not a great trigger. Yeah, I'm getting very picky on these triggers because... I'm getting triggered on triggers, though. That's from Steph. Yell, her, yell at her about that one. <laughs> I'm mad about this is because it's little stupid shit like this. Little tiny, like, quality of life, small gaming pieces in the big picture that ruin the experience. And I know this sounds really, really picky. Like, what are you talking about? And you may not have an issue. And if you don't, oh, my gosh, that's fantastic. I, I wish I had your life. But I have issues with that. And I'm looking at this trigger. And once again... Once it, look, you can see it. Holy fuck, you can see it. Look again, folks. Look at the screen. Look at the screen. Look what I'm showing you. The trigger, although does look like it has a little bit of a lip that comes out, 
look at the resting position and the 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 white part of the controller that goes down. Look, it actually goes back. It goes down and then it goes back in. So the, the resting place of the controller of the of the um, trigger is actually angled down. It's not right. That needs to be fucking redesign it. It's wrong. That is wrong. It doesn't work. It doesn't work for racing games. It doesn't work for any game that requires you to hold it down for a long period of time. It just doesn't work. Go hold a GameCube controller. They had a fucking the it's like concaved. It's like a half pipe. Your finger sits in there. It's beautiful. It's like a soft pillow. It's just beautiful. It sits in there, depresses perfectly in. There's no issues. Go grab a 360. Go grab a Duke. Go look at some of those other joysticks. Go grab any third party. There's a lot of third party ones that do this as well. They're so beautiful. I know. I'm I'm completely going crazy because this is I'm mad because this is the design. This is it. We have another generation of fucked up triggers for PlayStation 5. And I'm kind of mad about it, if you can't tell. I I really wish they would have fixed that. That was my number one complaint. I don't give a fuck about the touchpad. I don't give a fuck about your little LED lights. I honestly don't really give a shit about like your D-pad as much. But the triggers, that needs to be fixed. Sony, get your shit together. All right. Whew. Heated. I'm heated in this episode. Feels good. So yeah, good stuff. Uh, we're going to learn more about the PlayStation 5 later on. I'm I'm actually stoked. Um, I'm stoked for it. You know why? Because I think that um, this is a this is the beginning of a new generation of gaming. So what Microsoft and what Sony are bringing to the table, I think is fantastic, and I can't wait to uh, to play them and check them out. But man, that controller! Oh boy, am I the only one? It's fine. If if you're not affected by this, please tell me. It's cool. Like I'm I'm on I'm on another planet here. Speaking out of my ass. Um, which then should I even talk about controller batteries now? Because this is going to be a whole other topic. Speaking of controllers, Battle of the Batteries. Tune in next week for Battle of the Batteries. We have this debate going on between both companies, Microsoft and Sony. They are doing two completely different things with their controllers. And I think this is an interesting topic. And I think we should talk about it. And I would love to hear, please give me a call. Call me on the hotline. You know, yes, call me on the hotline. Leave me a voicemail and tell me what you think about this controller debate. What do you think about Sony's? What do you think about Microsoft? What do you think about this battery debate? We'll talk about it. 503-908-5490 is the phone number. Again, 503-908-5490. Write that down. And then at the end of this, put your thoughts together and call me. I want to hear about it. DualSense is doing rechargeable batteries. Now, Sony has always done a rechargeable battery system in their controllers. All right. Again, I think there's pros and cons to both of this. I'll talk briefly about them after this. Microsoft is doing AA replaceable batteries in their new controller, something they have done from the beginning as well. Pros and cons, rechargeable. Rechargeable is A, more expensive, more convenient. Rechargeable will lose their charge over time and then be able to never charge again. Like any type of rechargeable battery, they end up going out at some point. Laptops, cell phones, we all know this. Same type of thing for their batteries. I have some PlayStation 3 controllers that do not hold a charge anymore and have to be plugged in 100% of the time to even function. This is true, but also remember, they're almost 15 years old now. Okay, okay. Give or take, that's not bad, right? They last 15 years. Now, um, what else here? Rechargeable. Better for the environment. All right, less throwing away of batteries into our landfills. And um, it's convenient in the fact that we know how it works. We're used to it. We plug it in, it charges. We unplug it, it doesn't. Uh, it works. Everything's fine. So it's something familiar with us. Okay, we get that. There's just a few. There's more, but there's a few there. Double A batteries. Pros and cons. It's like Old Faithful. We know how this works. You're going to need to have batteries on hand. And it's something that the style that we've always used. Microsoft has always adapted this, so we're familiar with it. We know how it works. Um, the ability, you don't have the ability to charge the batteries unless you buy rechargeable AA batteries, but you then have to take them out, put them in a charger, then put, take them back out, put them back in your controller. Um, not having a battery built in is cost saving. I put a question mark. Is it because I think their controllers are just equally as expensive, right? So I don't know that they're actually giving you a discount because of this, unless it's on their end. Correct. Yeah. Um, this is possibly can be, yeah, worse on the environment because we're throwing away more batteries. All right. Um, 
having AA batteries gives the flexibility to either have rechargeable batteries that you purchase, put in, or just regular disposable one-time use batteries. Gives you the flexibility to have both. Um, the controller itself, will it last longer? The internals, the joysticks, will everything last longer because there's no internal battery to go bad? So I guess that's kind of the argument is, do you think the controller itself, the joystick, the internals, the buttons, hopefully don't spill Mountain Dew and Doritos on your controller, will it last longer because you don't have to replace a battery inside that you can't replace? Hey, you can't replace those internal batteries on those controllers. I mean, okay, I know you're yelling. Yeah, you actually can't. Sure, you can dismantle the controller, probably find some China Direct battery, order that up. Sony's not going to sell you the battery. Maybe put even a better battery from somewhere else. Put it in, make it work, retrofit, whatever have you. Yeah, anything can be done. But technically, you you really can't. And or Sony would rather you not replace the battery. They'd rather you just buy another controller. Makes sense. So that's kind of the argument. What do you think about this? Honestly, how I truly feel about the battery issue here, I don't give a shit either way. I really don't. If Sony wants to use rechargeable, fine. We're going to get 10 years out of the controller. Once the battery goes dead, we're going to just have to plug it in. Fine. Microsoft, totally fine. I need to have AA batteries around in the house anyway. I have a million devices that use AA batteries. We use them all the time. We remote, other controllers, I need to have them anyway. Not really a big deal. Do I have rechargeable AA batteries in a little dock that goes into the wall? Yes, I do. Do I use it? No, I really don't. Why? Because those also go bad in time. <laughs> I've used them for a while, then they kind of start to go bad. And I'm like, just put in the fucking... Just go buy a bulk pack on Amazon and just go with that, you know, and whatever. That's kind of how we we have it. So um, I'm fine either way. Some people are very heated about it and are very upset. And I, I want to know, like, I want to know why that is. Hit me up on the uh, voicemail hotline. Would love to know. Um, something is very, very fascinating with um, this next topic I'm going to talk about. Um. With COVID happening and everyone on lockdown, lots of um, customers are writing into Nintendo and they're asking the proper, what's the proper way to clean their Joy-Con controllers? Because they want to clean, they want to maintain, you know, things to be very, you know, sanitized. They don't want to be sick. So they're asking Nintendo, like, can we clean our Joy-Con controllers with, uh, with alcohol, like alcohol wipes or rubbing alcohol and whatnot? And so Nintendo did respond uh, according to their Japanese Twitter account. Uh, they said here, quote, customers shouldn't clean the Nintendo Switch Joy-Con with alcohol because there is a possibility that the alcohol would cause the color to fade. They also added that they do not recommend customers use non-alcohol disinfectants as there is a possibility that the chemicals could damage the product. Nintendo went on later on the, on the tweet there to say, we advise customers to consider using a soft, dry tissue to clean their systems and Joy-Cons instead. A dry tissue. That's like, that's like trying to rub off sidewalk chalk with your hand. That's not going to work. You need a hose for that. Just saying. A dry tissue. It's not going to clean or disinfect shit. Okay, I'm going to say something real quick here. I agree. Don't use rubbing alcohol. Don't use strong alcohol. Try to get some sort of diluted, like maybe 70% or less alcohol. Don't get like full, like 99 or 100% fucking alcohol. Like that shit will, that'll, that'll destroy it. But I have used, and I'm going to say I have used rubbing alcohol wipes, the little pads, little square pads. I've used them for years. Even back in the 90s, I would use these to clean contacts with Q-tips and, and uh, I'd get it, I'd wet it a little bit, use it to clean contacts, dry it off very thoroughly, make sure you're very careful. You don't want to sit there and leave it on there for a long period of time. And I'm not telling you to go and do this, but I'm saying if you do, if you do happen to do it, it can be done, but be very careful, be very light with your touch. And I wouldn't, honestly, I wouldn't do it like, Every, every day or every week. You will rub off the finish. No doubt about it. You take those wipes, if you rub it on the artwork of a game, it takes it right off. It takes it right off. So be very, very careful with that. 
Um, but I have used it to clean contacts and also used it to clean cartridges. But yes, even like Super Nintendo games, I have I've picked up some games where people have used it and like wiped really hard. And you can see like the finish, the shine of the cartridge is gone. The silver of the cartridge um, is totally gone. Like it's faded. It's messed up. So just be very, very careful. Um, not that you can't use it. You just have to be very, very careful. Um, so yeah, there's a little bit of, of news there. I think it's crazy. Like what are you supposed to use to clean your shit? You know, I guess just get your dry uh, tissue. You know, yeah, like if you have anything sticky like soda or Doritos or Mountain Dew or pizza, you know, like what are you going to, that's tough. That's tough. I'd be very careful. But, um, you know, so basically in other news, um, in other news, Nintendo did talk about, um, well, customers asked actually, customers asked, they were like, hey, also, um, what can we do about um, Joy-Con drift? They put that in there too. They're like, okay, great. We can't clean. We basically you want us just to sit on our remotes with with stinky butts. Okay, I got it. How do we how do we fight Joy-Con drift? And they they actually responded with this. Stop it. Get some help. Stop 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 it. Get some help. We can't win. We just can't win. <laughs> um, some other Nintendo news. Twenty years later. This is so cool. I love reading articles like this and finding stuff like this. Bless the hacking and modding community. Bless them. 20 years later, fans of Super Mario 64 discovered that Mario 64 smoke sprite that has been displayed in the game. Remember when you touch fire or something and Mario goes, ah, ha, ha, and he jumps around and his butt's on fire and smoke is behind him. That smoke, that sprite was incorrect all this time in the final release version of Mario 64. It is wrong, and it's due to an error in the code, the way that the code was put in. A new ROM hack for Super Mario 64 reveals that a fix on this smoke, and we now know it was a visual bug all along. The modders fixed it with only using a single line of code. Um, according to this description in the patch on romhacking.net, the hack adds new art, which is much better looking, uh, which is a much better looking smoke particle than the current smoke that's inside of the game. Hidden beneath an incorrect line of code, according to the hacker who found this, Zoink Noise is the guy's name. And according to Zoink Noise, he said this, <clears throat> it's now known that the texture is displayed in the wrong format by the game, resulting in black garbage pixels. Since video game smoke of this era was often uh, depicted with black garbage pixels, the mistake went unnoticed for over two decades. This patch corrects the error by displaying the texture correctly as proper transparent smoke. It does not add any new art, any new textures. It has been inside the ROM all along. So what's crazy is that this smoke texture was in here, was meant to be used, but the code they put in was wrong, it still worked, but it was incorrect. I have pictures to show both. Are you ready for this? It's really fascinating. Boom. So here we are. Here is the incorrect smoke. All right, you can kind of see it. It almost looks like little X's, doesn't it? Just like little tiny X's, like the same X's that are on Mario's eyes. Basically, it looks like that. Then with the correct code put in, there is the smoke. Look at that. It actually has a, like a 3D depth to it. Like transparent in some areas. Isn't that crazy? Man, I just love stuff like this. It's like years and years later, people are finding new things about these old games, you know, either due to limitations or like assets that were there like this. This was an asset that was been in the cart the whole time, but the code was wrong. So it wouldn't display it properly. Like, what else are we going to find down the road? It's amazing. I think this is so amazing. I love it. Zoink knows. Zoink knows. Zoink noise. Congratulations on the find. That is fantastic. I love it. Uh, have you guys heard of Build-A-Bear before? That The place in the mall you go in, you build your cute little bear, you know, and you can customize your bear and like the type of fur and you can put outfits on it and little hats. You can actually, you know, make it say something really cute and cutesy. Yeah, this is nothing like that. This is called Build a Switch. 
you can build a switch now. Nintendo was offering this, probably not at this moment because of COVID and all that's going on. But once this all is behind us, they'll probably allow you to do this. But so three years after the switch is released, you are now able to go to Nintendo on their website and customize a Wii or I'm sorry, I wish, fuck, I wish customize a switch to your liking. What does this mean? Exactly. It's currently available only in Japan. The new service allows customers to assemble a starter kit with their own special color combinations featuring 10 different color options for Joy-Con. That's all of the color combination they offer. Uh, also different colors for the Joy-Con straps and the little piece that goes up top. So you can mismatch. You can do different colors if you want. Very cool. Uh, the bright tones include orange, purple, navy, lime, pink, and more. Additional choices in the customization program are supplementary micro SD cards, games, Nintendo Switch online service, so you can activate it and have it on this console already, um, carrying cases, peripheral equipment, and more. The Nintendo Switch customization program is available right now, It's the, according to the article, on Nintendo Japan's website. I would double-check that. I know that they're having issues even selling consoles right now because they're out of them. So I would double check that. But according to this article, they're still there. Um, this is this is cool too. Customers also are were very excited, very excited about this. And they were excited so much that they asked Nintendo and they showed so much interest in this. They asked Nintendo if maybe in the future if you're able to let us customize our, our Switch and maybe you'll allow us to do this and that, is there a possibility in the future that maybe you'll release a Joy-Con that doesn't drift? They asked may, maybe if they're planning to do that. No, I don't think they are. Before we round out the controller talk, I just want to say I have a solution for all of this. All right, all of this is the solution. If you have a problem, you know, with Joy-Con drift, if you're worried about that, if you're worried about keeping your controllers clean and sanitized, if you're worried about all that, I have the solution. It's very simple, and it works. It's from the same family. All right, the Joy-Con can be used perfectly. It's perfectly acceptable to put a Joy-Con inside of a Wii condom, Wii remote condom. Look at that. It fits perfect. Everything about it is lovely. You just you, you just put it in there, and you've got your controller in there. Look, you got access to your to your joystick. You kind of have access to the the buttons. You kind of have that there. Uh, turning it up here, you kind of have to guess guess and tell if if you're going to hit a a top button there. But everything is just kind of you know. And then you can wrap it like like this if you want to if you want to cover it up. So you can cover it up. You can put this like like this, and then. And then right there, is, there we go. Then it's, here, well, shit. And then it's, it's complete, here we go. It's completely protected. Here it is, completely protected. Um, you see a 360 degree view of your Joy-Con is completely protected from the elements. Everything is lovely. And I think that's a great way to uh, protect it. Okay? Just make sure it's in there all the way. There you go. It's in there all the way. That looks really nice. And comfortable. See this little grip back here, this little indentation? This is here for your middle finger. You see it goes right around there. And then this goes here in the concave of the of the condom there. And then look, you're 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 ready to go. I think this is great. It's a nice, nice I should patent this. This is really nice. Oh look at that. You can drop it and it won't even won't even do anything. It's great. It's totally protected. <laughs> Stop it. Get, get, get some help. All right, let's move on to some tech news. How about that? Moving right along. NVIDIA GTX 2080 Ti Cyberpunk 2077 editions are selling for 5000 plus on eBay. What the fuck? What? I don't even know what the fuck I'm reading. I don't even know what the fuck I'm reading. It's true. These very rare limited edition NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti cards were given to only 77 lucky people earlier last year. And they are now showing up on eBay. And of course, and why wouldn't they? Because people are paying ridiculous amounts of money for it. If I had five grand to blow on uh, just a graphics card, I mean, pfft, I don't even know what I do. I wouldn't. Well, first of all, that's crazy. But supply and demand, people are really, really after that. And I think that's crazy to me. If you, 
If you bought one of these, please send me an email at, or send me a voicemail and let me know why you did that. I would love to know. I have a picture of the card here just in case you uh, forgot what it looked like. I, to be honest, it looks awesome. It's very, very cool. But really, like, w come on. I don't even know what to say. I mean, you know, I, I you guys know I'm, I've am i been on eBay. I used to do the eBay thing for many, many years. And it's like, I know there's supply and demand. I know the collectible market. But still, like, that's crazy. This card alone. Okay, yes, true. This card is one of the best graphic cards you can buy on the market. It's 2080 Ti. Yes. It's about a thousand bucks or 1200 bucks. Yes. This is true. But five grand, like four times the amount. Like, wow. It's crazy. Crazy. Um, yeah, but it's happening. It's real. They're online. They're selling. Just wanted to make mention of that. Uh, one of the guys here, they, there was an article he was talking about. He was like, yeah. He's like, I got this for free. He said, but I want to get rid of it because this card is worth more than my entire current PC setup. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. And honestly, if I had the card, I would probably do it too. To be honest, if I had it and someone said, I'll give you five grand for it. Fuck. Even if I had a, even if I had a pretty decent card in my PC, I would still, I wouldn't use it. I'd sell it. I mean, that's crazy, but that's nuts that people are paying that. I just can't believe it's worth that much. Steph's over here just saying that most, uh, some people's aesthetic on the PC, like the way it looks with their completely transparent cases and everything, RGB, lights, fans, all that LED stuff, all that really fancy stuff. Sometimes the look of it is more important. And I get that completely. It's like a, it's like a car, right? Some people want to build a car that's all go, no show. Some people want to build a car that's all show, no go. I get it. I get it. Crazy talk. Crazy money. Um, there is a new switch dock that looks like a little mini GameCube and it lets you plug in GameCube controllers even. Has two ports for GameCube controllers, two USB ports for two other USB controllers. It's a dock, charges your console, and outputs HDMI to your TV. Uh, it's scheduled to be released June, June later this year for $54.99 US dollars. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty fantastic. Is there shit? Did I even put the name of it in here? Fuck. Sure didn't. Sure didn't. Oh, you can look it up. You can look it up. Sorry. You know, you come here for news, but you can go look it up. <laughs> Here's pictures of it. This is really, really cool. I think, as you see here on the left, the picture there is basically this the dock. This little blue thing pops up, and then you dock your switch in there. The front, we have two GameCube controller ports. They look like they're tilted sideways. There's the dock side shot with the uh, the flap up, and there it is with the console in it. Uh, I think their intention was to have something accessible for Smash, but it can be used for other things too. You know, there are some games that support the GameCube controller, uh, some Switch games that do that, uh, like Grid, for instance. Uh, they support all the analog features of the GameCube controller, which is great. I only worry, I worry about this stuff. Remember, we had articles about it, not being the right power source and it bricking consoles and doing a bunch of other weird stuff. This to me, I worry about that. I worry about a dock that is this small holding that large ass switch in that manner. Let me just, just hear me out real quick. If it doesn't have proper support and that switch can move around, which it looks like it kind of can in a way. Sure. That little flap that comes up and holds the back of it. I feel like it needs to be like, two to three times the size, have a bigger flap extend or something, and then have more of like a, a, a cradle, more of a, a dock for it to sit into like the original dock. Why do you think Nintendo has a dock that's like huge on the sides to support it from moving back and forth? If that console is docked and it starts to flex and come forward or back or side to side, it will damage those, the very small delicate pins at the bottom of that console to where it makes connection honestly, there's people even on YouTube making videos like I bought a hundred broken switches and they all have broken bottom connector connectors on the bottom. It's because people are jamming those things in and out of their dock. I am so, I mean, please be careful when you dock and undock your switch. Like when Steph and I do it and we move the switch around a lot, she here has it here at work. We have it in the TV. I move it over there for streaming. We're very careful, but I'm like two hands on that fucker. And I'm like, Click, unclick, and when I put it back on the dock, dude, I am like watching the sides. I'm like lining that bitch up. I'm like, 
All right, okay, I'm feeling it out. Is it there? Okay, then I gently put it in. I know I'm being very, very like anal retentive about it, but that will prevent damage. And you really should be careful too. It's like, I talked about this, I think last year. You know, you have those friends that just jam cartridges into their fucking console. Like, bam, they just slam them in. Come on, bro. Don't do that. Stop doing that. Be very careful with those cartridges. Same thing with this dock. So I worry about this. Second thing about this. Now, I think this is great. And I think this is a great feature. And I would love to have this. But I think with having wired connections in the front like this, with the switch not being fully like supported and enclosed in there, that worries me. What happens when somebody gets their ass kicked on Smash and they they throw a controller or they're like heated a moment, they move the controller and it pulls the dock. It's going to pull the dock. That switch is going to flex, fall off. The switch could fall off the table or wherever you have it, the, t the end table, fall down. It could break, well, number one. But two, the pins could get damaged because of the flexing. All right, then you have a completely other problem on your hands. So my suggestion, this is what I would do if I were to buy this thing. One, if you're going to use GameCube controllers, Hey, use wave birds. Solved. Use wave birds. Easy. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Do that. Or second, if you have to use wired, which is fine, buy controller extension cables for whatever controller you have. To be honest, this is something I've never really talked about. It's a rule I've had since the beginning of time. All the way up from NES, every console that I own from NES, Super Nintendo, 64, PS1, PS2, uh, Saturn, GameCube, uh, you name it. Anything that has a wired connection, I have extension cables for them. Controller extension cables. They make them. Just buy them. That way, you have enough slack. You have enough room. Plug those in. It gives you an extra five, six, seven feet, however long they are. Some of them are even 10 feet. And then you plug your controller into that, and then you got plenty of slack. No problem at all. Put that switch on a dock uh, up away, far away, so no one can touch it. No issues. Because I'm worried about that. As you can see, I'm worried about that. But it looks really cool, and I love it. And I think having quick access to uh, your GameCube controllers, sign me up. Sign me up. 55 bucks, a little steep, but uh, so was the dock for that Nintendo sells. I think we bought one at Walmart, and it was like 80 bucks or 70 bucks. Like, holy shit. I mean, might as well just buy another Switch. Shit. Oh, good stuff, man. Good stuff. Uh, some new information about Xbox Dashboard. Yeah, Xbox uh, Xbox One dashboard uh, is going to launch sometime this month. This month with new updates and addition, very very cool. I made a few bullet points to kind of talk about it. Simplified guide layout, the new default tab order opens guide with tabs and a new left to right configuration. Party messaging invites has now been combined to a new parties and chats tab. Settings, audio, power options all located in the Profile and System tab. And looking for groups can be found in the People tabs next to the Find Someone option. There's app and system notifications are now grouped under the bell icon. They're trying to condense and make it easier to navigate instead of having too many things out there. I think that's great. I think that's great. Uh, I'll say it again. I'll say it again, though. Can I please have the OG Xbox 360 dashboard back? <laughs> I, just, I want that back. I want it back. <laughs> um, got a lot of great news right a lot of tech stuff going on Microsoft Edge Microsoft Edge remember this this is Microsoft's browser that they introduced that just recently is now using the Chromium engine to function you remember this we talked about it Microsoft Edge folks this is huge news has now surpassed Firefox in popularity in only a couple of months of being out. What? That's insane. Microsoft's gamble to use the Chromium-based Edge browser appears to have paid off, at least in the short term. Bleeping Computer reported this, that Edge is now the second most popular desktop web browser based on usage. Net market share giving the software 7.6% of the market share, uh, eclipsing a declining Firefox with almost 7.2%. Edge is still way far behind Chrome. Chrome is 68.5%. Wow. Okay. Big time. But uh, in comparison to Firefox and Edge, like, dude, Microsoft Internet Explorer was like 0.0001%. 
All right. And it was only like government websites that are like, we only use Microsoft uh, Explorer. We don't use any other browser. And that's the only time you use it. It's the only time you use it. But that's nuts. That's big news right there. Uh, we have some audio, actually some really cool audio stuff that's going on with Discord. And I find this fascinating because I've never heard of this company called Crisp before. K-R-I-S-P, Crisp. Uh, I did an update to my Discord uh, in the server and I got this little notification that says, we now support Crisp background noise suppression. When you go into a, a server with voice chat, you click the little icon on the bottom and boom, you have your background noise removed. And I'm like, whoa, this is interesting. I tried it out. And to be honest, it's fucking crazy good. Here are some things about it. This is big. This is big time. And I encourage everyone who uses Discord, anyone who uses like chat programs or stuff, take a listen to this. Take note. Number one, just go update your Discord client right now and you'll see the update happen and you'll see that you'll now have options in your audio settings for crisp. Uh, when you join a voice channel, it'll actually be at the bottom next to your name. You'll see a little like, almost like mixer looking icon, just click that and it pulls up the crisp interface. But this isn't just noise suppression. Noise suppression just actually suppresses everything that's like background noise, like white or pink noise, background noise, you know, a little bit of hissing, that type of thing. This is not, so that's just noise suppression. This is a background noise suppression with AI machine learning involved. And this is why it gets really, really cool and really technical. This is what fascinates me a lot. This has the ability to remove background noise, i.e. chatter, crowd sounds, other people talking, dogs barking, keyboard clicks, oh Lord, yes, sneezes, clicks, pops, and much, much more. Here's how it works. I found this really fascinating. It uses machine learning. So when you talk into it, when you turn it on and you talk into it, it realizes and is learning the way that your voice sounds, the timbre of your voice, the tone of your voice, the frequency range at which your voice lives, all right? It analyzes that. But then anything else beyond the scope of that, anything outside of that scope, it will eliminate it and duck it, get rid of it. So I was like, okay, no, this is bullshit. This is, there's no fucking way. So, right. So here's what happened. So I tested it. I turned it on. I clicked test. I started talking. I talked for like maybe like 10 seconds. I talked just like this. No, like I'm playing. Hey, da, 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 da. Stopped. Then I began to snap. I heard maybe three snaps and then the snaps were gone. They were gone. And I'm like, whoa, that's cool. Okay. That's good. And so it learned. It's like, that's not your voice gone. Now it knows. Then I started talking some more. Then I started to talk and snap at the same time. You could hear my voice as I'm talking real time with my voice coming through, but you could not hear the snaps. Now I don't have this on here. So obviously you're going to hear all this, but on discord, when I'm like gaming with friends, that that works blows me away you may sneeze or something it will eliminate that dog in the background barking eliminate that very very cool stuff machine learning background noise suppression i find this very very cool um i think it's honestly it's like a new frontier for for background noise suppression very very cool they offer a desktop client as well i downloaded that thinking i could just like turn it on and and use it on my desktop for everything I tried it, you download it, you have to inject it into your program. So like Skype, Zoom, whatever, Google Hangouts, whatever, you have to select your microphone and your speaker as the crisp input output. All right, so it actually takes over, which I didn't really want, and or I don't really want that on my gaming PC. I'll just use it for Discord, very cool, which is really where you need it the most. So with this, I know I'm, I'm talking a lot about this. This is really cool stuff though. Very, very geeky techie stuff. Now I put together a few small, like a list of things. Here are reasons why you would want to use it, should use it and should try it. You should check it out. Okay. So here we go. I want to give you a couple of pointers to get good audio when you're playing with your friends, when you're gaming, when you're doing all the sort, sort of things, this is what you should do. All right. Number one, if you're gaming with your friends, you should always have headphones on. Number one, wear headphones. I hate to sound like a completely big fat dick right now, but if you don't have headphones, do not play with your friends online because your friends online do not want to hear your game background coming through. They don't want to hear any of your other shit that's going on. All right. We don't want to hear it. Get headphones. I don't care if you use little cheap little earbuds that came with your iPhone. Just put those in. All right. The cheap, maybe the cheap ones that came at the dollar store. 
Who cares? Wear headphones. You need headphones, number one, period. End of story. Once you have headphones, now, you should enable this crisp background suppression and, and try it. Check it out. But you should enable this if here are some reasons why you should do this. If you have a mechanical keyboard, period. If you have a mechanical keyboard, <laughs> don't laugh at me. It's true. If you have a mechanical keyboard, I don't give a shit what switch you have. If it's a mechanical keyboard and it has clippity cloppity horse hoovity hooves, you should turn on crisp because I tried it with Steph. She has a loud mechanical keyboard. She lo Yeah, she loves it. She wants to continue to use it. She wants to continue to type like this too. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you have a mechanical keyboard and you're going to be talking with other people and you're going to be horse hooving it, turn this on and at least try it, at least test it. It does work. We tried it and it's fantastic. It works. She's typing where normally I would hear horse hooves going, patches the horse, clip cloppity. We don't anymore. I don't. And she can actually talk to me while typing. I don't hear the typing. Once in a while, you hear one or two clicks. Come on. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. It's, I don't even have a fucking keyboard by here to do it. But it's when you start to hear shit like this. Well, you like ASMR, so you would like it. But when you start to hear this, hey, guys, I need backup on uh, the blue flag, blue flag. Hey, can someone come over and help me? Help, guys, get over here. I need help. That's what you hear. That's what it eliminates. It's very, very cool. So have a mechanical keyboard, blue, brown, red switches, whatever have you. If they're clippity clops, turn it on. Try it now. Um, and you should go type and check it and see how it works. It's very, very cool. Also, you should use this crisp if you have a condenser microphone that is more sensitive. And condenser microphones by nature are way more sensitive than, say, a dynamic microphone, than a dynamic microphone that's built into your headset, way more sensitive. Now, you could have your input gain up really high on your mic and, and this and that. That, too, can play a role. But if you do use, like, a very nice condenser microphone uh, outside of uh, normal microphones, turn it on because that's going to be uh, definitely a problem. Also, if you use any type of mic that is not push to talk. Most people don't use push to talk anymore. Maybe about 10 or 15 years ago, we used to use push to talk. I always joke about this. <laughs> Bless you, my dear. I always joke about this. Like I used to use TeamSpeak and I used the F key for my push to talk. And every game I would, <laughs> I would go into, I would hold F. And sometimes if I was on like my desktop, it would give that little windows like boom, 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 boom sound. And I would hold F and turn my speakers up just to fuck with people when they pissed me off. And it would go... <laughs> <laughs> no, so funny. I loved it. Oh my gosh. Everyone laughed and they're like, okay, Jason, you're annoying. Stop it. Hey, you had crisp. It would eliminate it. So there's another point. If you have a condenser microphone, that's super sensitive. Check that out. If you don't use push to talk and it's an open mic at all times, you should probably try to use it then as well. Um, and to be honest, you know what, you know, I'm going to shout it out. Mr. Glav, you, sir, you have one of the most sensitive microphones I've ever heard in my life. And I would love to test this with you uh, on our next gaming session. Uh, I think you even use push to talk because you know it's so sensitive and your mic's right there. Uh, but yeah, let's try it. Let's try it. So anyone else using that microphone, try out or, or on Discord, try it out. Now, before I wrap it up, you do have some noticeable degradation of audio across the frequency spectrum. I have noticed. Kind of throughout... You definitely lose some fidelity throughout, but mostly noticeable on the top end. I'd say anywhere between like probably 6 to 20 kilohertz, like all the way up. The whole frequency spectrum up there is pretty much degraded. It's not horrible sounding. It's not like, oh, I can't, I can't understand this terrible sounding. It's just, it sounds, it sounds a bit grainy. It sure does. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. A little muffled, a little grainy, uh, but you have to take some sort of hit in order for this to work, right? I mean, it has to. Um, and maybe in the future, we'll get to a point where there is no degradation at all. Could be fascinating. But as it sits now, there is a little bit. But what's the trade-off? Hearing patches of horse clip cloppity hoof all day long or you have clean audio? Dude, think I've been in servers in our own gaming sessions where we've had five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 people in a Discord server. And it's fucking chaos. Everyone has different mics. Everyone has different input levels. It is an absolute shit show. 
of just stuff going on everywhere. In that case, almost push to talk would be wise, but if not, if we have open mics, put on crisp. It almost would be worth it to not have any of the background noise. Or, Dude, how many people do you play with who are in like a room with like someone's watching TV or a movie in another room and all of a sudden you hear the fucking exciting parts of the movie happen and the explosions and shit? Or like you hear all the high end, right? Because that cuts through the mic a lot. Low end, not so much, but high end, like mid and high range, like swords, whoosh, whoosh, all that shit. You hear that. Those frequencies travel the furthest. Those frequencies will cut through and you'll hear that the most. I can't tell you how many movies I've watched just listening to them on Discord. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But you do hear stuff like that, like TV news and whatnot. Very cool. Very cool stuff. Crisp noise suppression with AI machine learning. I love it. I love it. Um, oh, yeah. Good point. It's free on Discord. It's already there. It's You're able to use it. The desktop client also, I believe, is free. I think, oh, that's what, two hours. Thank you, Steph. It's 120 minutes of free use before they charge you. So take that consideration. I think it's a great feature to have that we get a free on Discord. Absolutely. Very cool. Um, Retrobit is at it again, introducing an updated and slightly redesigned Dreamcast controller. Yes, this is very, very cool. And I love that Retrobit actually has the blessing from Sega officially to do this. That makes it so awesome. Like that makes it so worthwhile to me. Uh, in collaboration with Sega, they are altering the classic design of the so popular, well, to some, not so popular to some others, the original Dreamcast controller. Oh, oh, that's right. I forgot. The Dreamcast controller, the one everyone uh, loves. Yeah. Guess what? The triggers on that are amazing. And have you noticed that they actually are concaved and they go in and the angle's great? Like, fuck, man. Susan, you fucking jerk. <laughs> Steph's just looking at me. She's laughing. Um, six face buttons. So your fighters are all going to be completely supported. Similar to that Saturn 3D controller, 2D fighting genre. You're going to be represented. New D-pad, a circular D-pad as opposed to the cross-shaped design, a brand new all redesigned analog stick, and repositioned triggers. Uh, just like RetroBit's earlier designs with the Genesis and Saturn releases, the new Dreamcast controller will receive both the wired and wireless treatments um, through the system's proprietary connector. This is great. A USB version will most likely be seen at some point, but not, uh, not uh, originally at first. A lot of the details are yet to be announced, like pricing, compatibility, peripherals, and all that sort of thing. We don't know about colors and whatnot. We just have this kind of like sketch mock-up design. But they do say that it will be released sometime in 2020. Here's a picture. So cool. So there's a new rounded D-pad. You can see that the joystick up there is new. Six-button layout. So cool. Love it. Reposition the triggers a little bit. This is great. I would love to get my hands on one. Love to. Very, very cool. I'm excited. I love the Dreamcast, man. I love it. I really don't mind the um, the controller as much as I'm not really a fan of their original joystick, though, on the Dreamcast. It's a little, it's a little small. It's um, it doesn't really have any rubber. It doesn't actually at all have any rubber on the top, so the grip is a little weird. And um, I just think it feels a little flimsy overall. So this is this is a welcome change. Welcome change here. And that's what we have for our tech news. Wow, what a great, what a great uh, section there. A lot of tech stuff. We're going to jump into the voicemail hotline here. 503-908-5490 is the phone number. If you want to talk about something, hit me up. I would love to chat with you. 503-908-5490 is the phone number. Uh, we're going to jump right into the phone lines here. I think we got uh, we got a couple calls here. Uh, let's see what we got here. Hey, Jason. Voicemail Maniac Cameron Johnson here. Uh, my question for this week uh, is going to be, are there any or were there any specific, I don't know, deals, 
um, games that you passed on that you've since uh, you know have regrets about um, any you know either uh, games or equipment purchases whatever just things that you deals that you kind of passed up may have regretted later on in life or today. Hmm. Um, I think I pretty much took advantage of most of those deals, but I did I do kind of regret not picking up a, a 3DO after selling mine, you know, a few years ago, but not a huge deal overall. So, hey, have a great week, man. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Cameron. Appreciate that. Thanks again for your weekly voicemails. I always look forward to them. That is a great question. Is there something that I've passed on and regret not buying? Um, yeah, actually, there is. I remember back in the day, um, Intec. I think it was Intec? Yes. Intec. The company used to make all of those weird, like, game storage cases and things like that. They made... A um, this had to have been like early 2006, 2007. They made a uh, a Wii LCD monitor. Forget what exactly what it was called. It was called like a called like a portable like monitor something, where you take the Nintendo Wii, you actually slide it in like a dock. It plugs in. It has a screen that then pops up, and it has a sensor bar built into the bottom of the screen. It has two speakers. It has the power button. Um, and it folds flat. So like, it's almost like briefcase style, but it has like adapters for you to plug in, like, or store your controllers has a really, a bunch of really cool features. And I remember seeing these back in the day and kind of laughing at them thinking like, why would anyone want a portable, like we, who wants to play we on this little ass screen? It wasn't a little ass screen. It was kind of, I think it was like seven inch, which is a, which is actually a decent size, but it's all in one portable. Now, I was tripping because in the early 2000s, I bought one for GameCube. All right. I bought one for GameCube and I had that too. It, that one was all black and it was a lot smaller, but it fit on the back of the GameCube and it had this little like adapter that would plugged into where the handle was to kind of hold it. It was like these two spikes that went down and then this like half, I don't know, I'm not explaining it very well, but it, it attached to the back of the GameCube and it also had a screen that sat on top and flipped straight up and it had two speakers and then you just basically plugged in your GameCube controllers in the front and if you bought a car adapter which it also supported you know you plug it it comes in with a little video port it goes in there power adapter and then you plug it into the cigarette lighter and you have a working GameCube fuck me and my cousin we played Mario Party 4 we started from Portland on a road trip you're we going to Disneyland for a road trip from Portland all the way down to the border of California. It was like four and a half hours. We did Mario Party 50 rounds. If anyone wants to know how long 50 rounds on Mario Party takes, it takes four and a half hours. I tested it. And at the very end, the AI Wario stole all of my stars and won the game on the very last turn. I'm not shitting you. We didn't have camera phones. We didn't have any of that recording at the time. I would have taken, I would have uploaded it to Twitter if it was around. But I had like 56 or so odd stars by the end of it. And Wario on the last went to a chance time. Fucking landed on chance time. Hit the little box. And it was star swap. And he randomly picked me. And I got zero stars, zero coins. Because we, we annihilated the AI. And he took all of my stars. That fucker. We joked about that for years. In fact, we still joke about it sometimes. But anyway, so yeah, in tech... I do regret not going into my local Fred Meyer and seeing it there and just buying it. I think it, they were kind of expensive too for the time. I think they were like 89 or 99 bucks. So they were, they were a hundred dollar bill, you know, for that. And you kind of be like, I don't really want to, why would I want that? But now what's fucked up is I've actually looked at them in more recent years. They're selling between, I've seen some three to 500 bucks. Can you believe it? So if anyone out there has like an Intec, we portable LCD dock. Uh, I mean, I guess you could sell it and make some money, but man, daddy would like. <laughs> They're really, really cool. Um, the GameCube one I had unfortunately broke, um, but I kept all the uh, pieces to it and hope to maybe fix it someday. It's in my collection somewhere, but very, very cool stuff. Cameron, I appreciate the call. 
Always appreciate you calling every single week, my man. Thank you. All right, let's hop back into the phones here. <clears throat> hey, Jason. Chris from Fort St. John, Canada here again. Hey, Chris. Uh, so my question for you is, what is a game from any generation that wasn't necessarily good or was deeply flawed that had one very interesting gameplay design aspect to it that elevated the experience enough that you would recommend it to somebody despite all its flaws. Right now, I'm almost done playing I Am Alive, which is this uh, Ubisoft game that was in development for nine years. It came out in like 2013 or 2012, downloadable game, where you're in a post-apocalyptic city and you're climbing and scavenging and carrying this little girl around. Uh, and it has this amazing uh, standoff mechanic where you uh, are pointing a gun at people and they hold their arms up and you press square and yell at them to back up and you can like kick them into fires. And so it's awesome. But the game is massively flawed, like truly unfinished. Um, also Clive Barker's Jericho mm. on 360 PS3, extremely flawed game. Uh, but it had this, it was this horror first person shooter. It, it didn't even have an ending. It was so unfinished, but oh, wow, really? sniper character. And when you shot bullets, you could go first person bullet mode and uh, control the bullet and hit enemies. And it was really cool. And I hadn't really seen anything like that before or since. So yeah, just games that uh, weren't great, but had one really cool gameplay aspect to them. Awesome. Thanks, man. Have a good one. Thank you, Chris. Good to hear from you. Glad that you're uh, hopefully doing better. Um, I know you were sick there for a little bit, so it's good to hear from you. Thank you for the call. And I always appreciate hearing from you too. My gosh, you guys are getting me with these really difficult questions and I'd love it. I love, I think they're so great. They're so deep. I think that um, a couple games come to mind, to be honest. Like I want to, part of me wants to say like Watch Dogs because Watch Dogs had like that cool ability to like hack things and change things. But ah, I just couldn't get into it. Like it, and that's, that's probably just a me thing. Um, and from what I understand, like the game was super broken. It's Ubisoft, you know, can't put it past them. But um, I want to say like that game, but also... I also want to say like Call of Juarez, that game wasn't necessarily broken, but had a really amazing like slow motion, like matrix style. Like you stop time and then you aim on people and then they bam, 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 bam. And it's Western theme. Like it's super legit. Although that doesn't really fit your question because like, it's not necessarily broken. Watch Dogs kind of was broken. It was very glitchy and buggy. Weird shit was going on, but I guess, Putting those aside, so those are like the two things that came to mind as you're asking it. And I thought I thought more and more about it. A couple games that I think do fit this is this one right here, House of the Dead, Overkill, uh, specifically on Wii. Um, now this game is available also on PC and PS3 and 360, possibly yeah. But the specifically the Wii version I think is is superior on the control side of things, because you have a Wii remote, you have a light gun. The Wii is the best light gun console out there. And there's a bunch of really great light gun games for Wii. Um, I collect them. I love them. But this game is broken in the fact that it has a, a terrible frame rate. And when you shoot some enemies, we actually, the, the screen actually freezes. Like you lose frames and it pauses for a second throughout the entire gameplay. Load times are unreal. They're so long, and because of all of that, it really hurts the gameplay, and I think the Wii struggles to run this properly, and it makes sense. It does. The Wii is kind of inferior hardware to a lot of that generation console games, so the fact that they did this and gave this to us is very ambitious, and in fact, this game has the most F-bombs in any Wii game, probably any game period, but it's definitely on the Wii. This is the most grown-up, most over-the-top, disturbing story you will ever see i think in a video game M minus probably duke forever which was also completely weird and disturbing in many different ways but this is completely disturbing too at the end <laughs> yeah i should i should do most disturbing stories in games i should do a video good call um but yeah so this one the gameplay it's hindered by hardware um and unoptimization issues another one just to round out i know it's over here I know it's over here. 
It's a game that I really, really love. Gremlin Interactive Interplay. This is loaded on PlayStation 1. This is a wonderful, fantastic game where it's very, um, very violent, very brutal, very bloody. It's a top-down, almost like puzzle slash dungeon. I want to say dungeon crawler, but it's like dungeon-esque where you run around top-down um, and you can run around and shoot enemies and try to find your way through um, caverns and puzzles. The only issue, the real big issue is that there's a mini map, but it's basically just a square like map with your dot in the center. And there's no real way to figure out where you're going, where you've been, other than seeing like the blood spatter around. Like, oh, I've been through here. I've killed people in here. I get every time I play this game, I play it for maybe 10 or 15. And in this, like the second level, I'm lost and I cannot fucking figure it out. This is the era where games never held your hand. They just didn't do that back then. But it's it's so broken that it doesn't tell you what where to go, what to do. It's like those invisible walls in games, like in Castlevania. Like, oh, if you throw a potion to this wall, it, it that's how you go. How the fuck are you supposed to know that? Like, I, I, I better read on PlayStation Magazine or Nintendo Power about how to fucking figure this out. But this game is great. I love it. I love playing it. The music's really good. Although, kind of repetitive because you're in these levels for so long, you kind of get fucked over. Um, but a great game. Very bloody. Very dark. If you haven't played Loaded check it out. There was a sequel called Reloaded. I have that as well. Not in a big box. That was when they were doing jewel cases. This is an early release. This is uh, to 1995. So this is a very early release for PlayStation and uh, a fantastic game nonetheless, but very broken. You just can't figure out what in the hell you're doing. You just run around like an idiot. So yeah, good stuff. Hey folks, thank you so much for the phone calls on the Heine House podcast hotline, 503-908-5490. If you have a question, I would love to talk with you, love to chat about stuff. Let me know about controller stuff. We talked about controllers and batteries, talking about gaming. Let me know how you're doing. Just even just check in. Like, I would love to just, you know, sit down and talk, have a little conversation with the community. And I appreciate that as always. Give a shout out to the patrons before we say goodbye. Thank you so much, patrons. We love you. Thank you for your support. Brandon, George, Aaron, Weldon, Tammy, Sam, Luke, Ryan, and Justin. Appreciate you all so, so much at the Game Loft, the main floor, and the ground floor patrons. You guys are amazing. Hey, if you enjoyed the show, if you had a good laugh, consider joining. Consider uh, checking out my tiers. I have a lot of great stuff that's in there. I do every month. I do an after party where we talk about things above and beyond what I can talk about here on the show. It's anywhere between 20 minutes to an hour. Usually it's an additional additional show that I give exclusively to patrons as well as music and everything else that's there. So lots, lots of great stuff. Um, of course you get the discord priority tier up there as well. So make sure you're, and that, that's a good, a good tip for all uh, new. We have a bunch of new patrons that have come in recently this last month. Make sure that your Patreon and your discord are both connected on both platforms. Once they're connected, um, then you will get the right tier in discord. All right. You get a cool badge in there. You know, you get a cool level and a color. Very cool. All right. Hey, thanks so much for listening. It's been an absolute pleasure. I think my show ran super long this time, so we're going to skip the music. We're just going to bounce right out. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I would love to see you next week kicking it with you. All right. Much love to you. Bye now. <laughs>